Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. In my last two videos, I've been working with this red kind of gauzy fabric and I made the pants in the video about how I did the pocket and then I made the top uh, in this wrap style. So I've been kind of obsessing a little bit about this fabric, but now I want to make two more pieces that coordinate with these. I like the idea that the top and pants are the same fabric, so I'm hoping it kind of looks like a jumpsuit when I'm wearing it. And I'm gonna do the same with two more pieces that will coordinate with this. So I've got this kind of crazy print, but I love the way it looks with the dark red. And I think it's really fun for summer. It's a rayon chalet, which I also really enjoy. The four pieces can mix and match really nicely. For the pant, I'm gonna use again Berta 5969. And I really do love this style. It's just, it's a super fast, easy pattern to put together. I'm gonna to be adding a pocket, which does take a little bit extra time, but it's so worth it. So that's what I used for these pants, but I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, really. But I like this, it has a flat front and then an elasticized back, belt loops, wide leg. It's just lovely for summer. So that's gonna be nice. I'm gonna pair it with an altered version of the peplum top from peppermint patterns. I think that the peplum top is quite cute and I might do that another time, but for today I wanna to be able to tuck that tank top in so that I get the look of the jumpsuit. So no peplum today. And I'm just making the whole top three inches longer so that I have room to tuck it in. And then I went ahead and cut the top out of muslin to just do a quick mock-up and make any changes to the pattern before I cut it out in the print. I'm definitely going to be getting back into some upcycling and thrift flipping for my next video, but I just am obsessed with this whole jumpsuit idea. So indulge me with one more video before we get back to upcycling and thrifting. I'm just gonna quickly sew up that muslin and I'll show you how I would do any fitting or any changes. And I don't think it's gonna take that long to sew this all up. And hopefully there are some nice quick tips that I can pass along along the way. So I hope you enjoy, let's get busy. This tank top pattern has a center back seam, so I'll start with that. And then open the back out. So there's the back shoulders. And then it has a little shoulder panel piece. And they did put some helpful notches. Two single notches on the front. And on the back, there's a single notch and a double notch. And that's really important so that you not only get it the right way around horizontally, but also vertically. So that makes it a lot easier to match up. So I do appreciate those notches. You see what I mean? Without proper notches, I might have it backwards this way and then it's not going to have the right curve on the side or I might have it front to back. So those notches are super helpful. So those are lined up with the back and then these edges will line up with the front shoulder edges. So now I've got two single notches to line up. That makes it nice and easy and gives me confidence that I've got everything the right way around. So I'll sew those four little seams. And there's a nice little opportunity to chain all those four together. Good, and then I can just snip those apart. Okay, and then I just have the two side seams. So when you're making a mock-up, you don't do zippers or buttonholes or hems or anything. You just get the basics done so you can try it on. Okay, I'm going to try it on and show you any changes I make. Okay, changes, there are a plenty. <laughs> I like the neckline, although I feel like it's a little wide. Um, so I'm going to just sort of take some out of the pattern right off the center front fold. I'm just gonna pinch out an equal amount all the way down. And then I like this little shoulder piece. I like that seam there. I just think that looks kind of nice. But this, like look at how deep those armholes are. I played around with the idea of just taking out that shoulder piece, but then everything is just wrong. So, but that's cuckoo. I don't, I don't appreciate that. Now, to be fair, when I printed the pattern, the little test square that's supposed to be one inch, it was a little bit bigger than an inch. And I just thought, oh, well, I'm doing a muslin anyway. I'll just kind of do it like custom size. But I don't think it was this much bigger, you know. What I'm gonna do is take it in along the sides quite a bit 
So I just made the bodice part three inches longer, thinking that that would give me tuck in amount, but it doesn't, right? It's still, I think I would need an extra two inches on top of that. So that means five inches total on the bodice part. So that makes the size more reasonable. And now what about a little dart here? I looked and looked for a tank top pattern that was suitable for a woven fabric. So I assumed it would have a bust dart. And you know what? It was really hard to find. Like I actually didn't find even one like that. I don't want it gapy around the armhole. So I'm pinching out that little dart and pointing it toward the bust point and just making sure that's going to sit nicely. Okay, you know we're friends now. <laughs> Good, so that sits nicer. And then when I have it off, I'll kind of just make the two the same, make that change to the pattern. I'll show you how I will deal with the difference in the edges here. By doing this, I have the opportunity to raise this up. So that's gonna work out well. This is kind of coming too far over. So I'll mark that. That should be fine. I'll have to clean up my line when I have it off. I'll raise this area about half an inch here at the dart and I think a whole inch at the side seam and then just blend into the back. I think the back will be fine as is. So that's a lot of changes. Didn't really anticipate that. <laughs> oh well, it, none of these changes are difficult. Let me just show you what I'm gonna do to the pattern. Um, and the nice thing is, is once you make, once you make changes like this, then you have the pattern and you can use it again and again. So I don't really mind the time it takes to make this fit nicely. So let's go to the table. We'll make these changes and then I'll cut. It's gonna be good. Don't worry. <laughs> so here's the front where I'm making most of my changes. All right, so when I cut out the muslin, I just drew on the fabric three inches down, but now I'm going to tape it to new paper and do it properly, adding on five inches. All right, so five inches, I'm just gonna draw and pivot my ruler. So wherever my ruler is laying on the line, I will draw and pivot and pivot. Okay, and then this center front edge, I wanted to take a half an inch off of that. And then on the side seam here, I'll just peek under and mark where those pins are. And though this would be the new sewing line, so I need to add seam allowance back onto that line. So I'll lay my half inch line on top of those pencil marks. Okay, so that's all pretty easy, right? Now let's get into the dart. It's not that bad, honestly. So I am just marking the two ends of the dart and I mark the point as well. So that shows me all I need to know. I just need three points there. I'm gonna do the same on this side. And then I'll just look at the two together and see if they are similar. No, they are not similar. So one is here and one is there. And then the point, one is there. The points are not too far off. So what I'll do is split the difference. I'll change my color. To split the difference, I'm gonna go in the center of this dart, right there, to the center of this one. So that splits the difference. That makes the two even, good. And the point, I'm just going to call the point. They were close enough. Good. There's the point. And the purple lines will come together. Good. So that's nice. And then I want to reline this edge. Remember, I wanted to bring it in there and bring it up here. Okay. And now darts get folded down. If they're horizontal, they go down. If they're vertical, they go toward the center. So with that folded down, I'm going to cut on my new line and I don't need to cut the whole thing here in fact it might make it easier if I don't but I did want to cut the point of the dart there so that I can see if that makes a little bit of a peak I can see through the fabric that there's one notch there's the other notch for the dart I'll just move that out of the way I'll tape on new paper because I'm raising up this armhole Good. Here's one notch of my dart. There's the other notch. And my edge is going like this. The last thing I want to do 
is mark that dot. I wonder if I can just go right through. Yes, perfect. Now this shoulder piece also has a bit of a adjusting to do. Matching up the sewing line, what it looks like when it's sewn together. There we go. Good. And then this got blended right about to there. There, that's nice. Okay, so now with my curved ruler, I can just like smooth out all of these lines into the original edge and then it just comes down into that dart beautiful and then it's going to come up isn't it i said i was going to come up a full inch here and about half an inch around in here okay there's the original curve and i would just want to tilt that there to come into that point that arm of the dart Beautiful. Well, that looks pretty darn good, hey? The front is ready to go. The shoulder panel is done, but now I've got to make some changes to the back. Adding on the five inches, taking some off the side seam, and then I just want to raise the armhole a bit to match the front. Lovely. That's going to be good. So my three pieces are ready to cut out, yay. So darts are usually one of the first sewing steps. And so I've got a dart on the front of the pant and now I've added the dart to the front of the top too. So that's what I'm gonna start with for both. And I just wanna show you how I mark and sew darts because it doesn't have to be super complicated. I put a little notch at my two arms of the dart and then I'm gonna poke a pin straight through the point of the dart. I'll just fold my paper back and then I want to see both wrong sides. I want to replace that pin with another pin on both wrong sides. So I'm just making a tiny pick with this pin and same over here, a tiny pick with that pin. If you pick more than a little bit, you're not going to be as precise. I know that that is the exact point of the dart. Then this one can come out. And I've snipped all my other notches, including those ones on the shoulder, so I can unpin my pattern pieces. This little shoulder panel piece is actually a great little fabric saver. If my front and back pieces had been that extra three or four inches long each, I wouldn't have got it out of this fabric. But because that little shoulder panel can be cut in a different spot of the fabric, I was able to get it. So I'm a big fan of that shoulder panel. So for my pants as well, I've cut the little snip at the top, pin right through the point of my size dart, fold my paper back, peel back the layer so I can see both wrong sides. And there, I've already replaced one pin with two pins just marking that exact point and then both pins can come out. And then to sew these darts, I'm bringing the two notches together. I like to have the fold on my right for all of them. I point a pin toward that notch, and this one that is marking the very point, I just wanna tuck that in sideways. So all four of my darts, I'm gonna pin exactly like that. So they're all four pinned like that. And now let's take it to the machine. So I'm starting right at that top notch. As soon as my presser foot is down, I can slide out that first pin and I start with a little back tack. Good. After my back tack, I'm gonna hold this pin directly in front of the needle. That's really it. Where, whatever's in front of the needle is where you're gonna go. So if I'm over like this, I'm in trouble. I wanna sew directly to just above this pin, really. So I'm just holding this point right in front of the needle. And then I'm right close to the fold now. And now my last few stitches are gonna be right along that fold. And contrary to most sewists, I, I do a back tack at the end of my dart. Never had a problem with it. Never had any like downside to doing a back tack there. So I do a tiny back tack. Good, that is it. 
So you get that nice skinny, skinny taper, tapering off to nothing. The little back tack is right there. It doesn't do any harm. That's what we want in a dart, that real skinny, skinny taper. Good. I'm going to do the other three just like that. This is a tailor's ham, and it's great for pressing darts. But if you don't have one, don't worry. You can kind of use the end of your ironing board. Um, you just don't want to press this area flat. The whole idea of the dart is to build in shape. So you want to build in this 3D shape. And so if darts are horizontal like this one, they press down. Give it a second to cool in that position. And if darts are vertical, like on the pants, they press toward the center. So that's what you want, that there is just a totally smooth taper. There's no little bubble at the point of the dart. Beautiful. Okay, with all four of those darts done, I'm going to set the pants aside now, and I'll just concentrate on the top. I'm going to be trimming the neckline and the armholes with a bias binding, but not in such a way that it shows. I'm going to use it as a bias facing. It's just going to be on the inside. But one place where I will have it show is on this shoulder panel that I like so much. I think it does look kind of good to have that delineated like that. So I need four times the width of that. Three and four. I think I'll use it like a flat piping. So that means I'm going to take this bias and flatten it out. First of all, so now I'm going to fold this piece just in half now and press again. So here's the front. And remember, we had these two little notches. So I'll find that. And if they don't line up, that might mean that I've got them to the wrong side. This one is going to be like this. And I just want this to be peeking out of that. I think that looks nice. That'll be all right. So I'm going to baste it in place. So let's go back to the machine. So I'm just going to set myself up with my edge of my fabric at the 15 line or 5 eighths line. Then I want to set this piece up so that the needle is going to be hitting the remnant of that crease there. That would be about like that. Okay. And I'm going to change to a long stitch length just in case my stitching shows at all afterwards. And I'll be able to pull that out if needed. Okay, I'll feed in my, my other shoulder edge and the two back shoulder edges. And chaining them together like this helps me to just be consistent from one to the next. So I've got those four in a chain all along that bias strip now. That's nice. Now I'm going to flip it over, starting with the back. There's my double notch. That's a good way to orient myself. There's my double notch on that one. That fits together. Now I'm switching back to my regular stitch length. And now I can see the exact line that I want to sew on. Okay, that looks good. Next shoulder panel goes under. And I'll back tack at the beginning and end of each seam now. Okay, I'm going to cut that now because I need the shoulder panels to come around to the front. So that's what the seam looks like with that little bit sticking out. Well, I'm completely in love with that. I will take those to the serger and serge all four of those. And then I'll push the seam allowance going up and give a little edge stitch. That'll be nice. So this bit of bias trim is 100% optional. You definitely don't have to do this. I'm just doing it for that extra little pop. Good. So I am happy with that. So the bias tape that I'm using is like this, where there's just two folds. The whole thing is not folded in half, which maybe you're more familiar with. So what you want is to find the single fold bias tape. So here's my front, the shoulder panels with that little bit of like flat piping. So I'm going to bind this neck edge before I sew up the center back seam because it comes to a V at the back. And so I think if I've got the binding on, then I'll be able to sew that nice and neat. These little corners are so that it comes up into the neckline. But I think I'd rather cut them off 
because then my binding will tuck in neatly to the back and this straight off here. So the same way that I set myself up to do the flat piping, I'll set myself up here. So this edge I'm going to have at my 15 line or 5 eighths line. This first fold I'll have at the needle. And I want the needle either right in the fold or a little smidge to the outside of it. I definitely don't want to cross that fold because it'll affect how nicely it folds to the inside. I'll be starting right there. So I just make sure that I'm not stretching out the neck edge. And to do that, I'll just keep a little bit of tension on the bias. And especially around the curve, I'll be putting just a little bit more tension on the bias so that it has to curve nicely around the neck edge. Good. And I won't cut this yet, just in case there's any wiggling that needs to be done. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, so I think I aired a little bit off of that fold. And then when I fold it in and fold it in, I don't want to see that little ridge. I don't, unless it was like perfectly perfect all the way around. And then I think it looks kind of nice. Maybe it's perfectly perfect all the way around. And it looks like I meant to do that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go with that then. That actually looks quite nice, doesn't it? That little tiny, tiny line. All right, let's go with it. I like it. So now what I want to do is fold this down and wherever my seam allowance is sticking out, I need to trim that off. So I'll go with that happy little accident of the perfect little line. And now I just want to trim my seam allowance down anywhere that is sticking out past this bias. So yeah, I'll fold this down now toward the inside and I'll push that out so that that beautiful little line shows. And I'm going to sew it from the inside and I'll be sewing right along that edge of the bias tape. So now I'm kind of just pulling this one in to make sure that it's like open right out to get that nice little happy accident to get my nice little line showing there. Now I could have done this so that this whole thing showed, right? I could have started by sewing it to the wrong side and then flip it around to the right side. And that can look great too. So here I sort of have to like shape the bias with my hands and make it into that nice curve. And the v-neck, the straight edge of the v-neck in the back is easier than the curve. I'm glad this has this v-neck at the back. So, a little ripply right now. Hopefully those ripples come out at the iron. And hopefully that, that little line looks like I did it on purpose, which I totally did not. But I like it. So I just pressed that whole neck edge and it just came out so nice. It feels really nice and flat and stable. I really love it. These edges here are sticking out funny. I'm going to trim that off. There's a center back seam on this tank top. And before I sew it, I think I will serge both of those edges separately so that I can just sew the back and then press that seam open nicely because that will help me to hide these ends. That'll be good. Okay, so I just serge the back edges. Um, I think I'll just take the tails of serging and move them so that they get caught into this seam. I really want this back edge to get lined up perfectly. So I'm lining up my edge with my 15 line or 5 eighths line. I don't want these to get shifted at all, so I'm gonna sink the needle down there before I even go. I don't want the feed dogs to like disrupt or dislodge those two edges from each other. I want those right nailed together. And 
then I can trim off my serger tails. And then I can just open that right out flat at the iron so that I have the perfect V so easily. That was, that was sweet. I have to say that was nice. Okay, and then the side seams. Just bring the two bottom corners together and then grab in the middle. Okay, and then we can take that to the serger. Alrighty, so I surged both side seams and now I'm just surging around the whole bottom edge. So when I did the neck band, it was one flat piece where I could go end to end. To do it around the armhole now is going to be pretty much the same as we did on the neckline, except we are going all around this circle. And so I'm going to have a bit of an overlap here. And where I start, this is going to be the, the side of the overlap that's going to show. So you need to start with a little bit of a fold so your edge looks nice. I think that'll work out nicely. And then my dart continues to go down. I don't let that get flipped up. And again, I'll be sewing all the way around, airing on the outside of this fold, just a smidge. And then I'm back where I started. Okay, and then I can cut off, giving myself just enough of an overlap. So I'm gonna start right there I'll bring this edge back around once I get there. All right, so I'll be sewing just that little smidge past, like outside my fold. Good. I'm starting right at that little fold that's kind of pulled in on an angle, and then I'll be sewing in the fold of the bias tape. Coming around to where they overlap, and just want to be careful here, and then swing it around so they really blend in together. Okay, so there's my overlap. You see how I brought that one out just a little bit more? I could have even done it more so that that corner didn't stick out. Oh well, no worries. It's all going to the inside. And by airing to that little bit past the fold, that's when I'm going to get that little line, which I really like. Kind of a happy little accident. And I'm going with it. Looks good. I'm going to see if I need to run to the iron or if I can just jump right in. So I'll fold that bias strip to the inside. Make sure everything is laying nice and smooth and flat. And then sewing right along this inside edge of the bias strip. But that bias just makes it turn so nicely. It just behaves. Erg. Right at the dart it looks funny, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not happy with that right at the dart. I'm going to just fix a little bit in there. So I'm just taking out a few stitches. I just don't want it to show at all. It's right at the front. Alrighty, I think one reason I was having trouble with those puckers is because, and you're probably yelling at your screen to remind me, I forgot to clip the curves. And I think clipping the curves will release that seam allowance let it spread out and not make the outer fabric pucker in. So that was a novice mistake. Okay, so there you can see that by clipping those curves that can spread out, I think that's gonna make it much easier for me to avoid those puckers. Yes, this feels better. I hope it looks better too. It was looking a little crunchy in there. Okay, I think I'll be able to press that better now. Okay, hopefully that helped. I've just pressed up a small fold on the hem about a finger width, and I'm just going to sew at the upper side of my serging. And then it's 
pop is done. This gets a final press. Okay, on to the pens. Well, the darts are already sewn. I did them at the same time I did the darts on the top. And so now I'm going to sew the pocket. So I take my pocket piece that has the curve cut out of it, lay it right sides together, right up into the corner. And now I'll just be sewing at the edge of my presser foot around that curve. Guiding the edge of my presser foot around that curve. And then I'm going to cut away this excess fabric here. Make sure you've got your pocket pieces onto the front of the pant, because once you cut this, there's no turning back. We're just gonna snip in, not cutting my stitches, but coming pretty close. So now I'm gonna take you back to the machine and I'm gonna do what's called under stitching, where I'm gonna push that seam allowance toward the pocket piece, and I'll be sewing just like a millimeter or two onto that pocket side right through three layers, the two seam allowance and the pocket. So for under stitching, I make sure my seam allowance is going off to my right. Pull the pocket piece over that seam allowance. I wanna feel that the seam allowance stays going off to my right. I'll feel it if it flips and it'll make a funny bump in the seam. I wanna also make sure that it's open entirely. So it's not like this, it's like that. Open all the way out. And what under stitching does is it just makes such a nice edge. It makes it really nice and easy to turn on a curve. You'll we'll see in a second. So there, it's just through the seam allowance and it keeps that edge nice. Look at that. It just flips to the inside now. No arguments. It just does what it's told. Now I can just top stitch that edge easily. I think I will just take it to the iron first just to be really nice and flat. But that under stitching is doing 90% of that job for me. So that just pressed so nicely. And now I think I'll just do an edge stitch there. It's a good idea to check the fit before you sew any pants that have a side seam pocket, just because you might want to take in that side seam and it can really mess with your pocket. Okay, under stitched and edge stitched. So it looks just super nice and slick. Okay, then I take the other two pocket pieces and put them right side together with the first two pocket pieces. So I'm just sewing two layers now, bringing corner to corner and corner to corner. And I'll just sew around that curved edge. And then I will serge those edges. I'm sewing just through two layers, not right through the whole pant. You can even do this as a French seam where you sew the wrong sides together first and then flip your whole pocket inside out, press it nice and flat and sew again and that encloses the seam nicely. You can finish your edges however you like though. And then just to finish off that pocket, I'm going to just tame these edges. Just make the pocket sit nicely. I'll just put the corner, the three layers that are going into the corner together and just sew those three layers across and down. And then the little bit at the bottom of the pocket here too. Just make sure that is all laying nice and flat and sew that little bit. I don't want this stitch to show on the final garment. So I'm just going to do this at the edge of my presser foot. There, so that completes the pocket. There's the opening. That's just lovely, isn't it? I love it. So the pockets are in place, all neatly finished on the inside. And so now I can just sew both side seams just like normal. So for these, I'll just sew at the 5 8 line or 15 line. So the whole side seam is sewn and served. Now I'm just gonna press toward the back. And now you can see inside how much nicer this pocket is than the traditional way that commercial patterns get you to sew a pocket. The pocket all goes to the front. The seam allowance can all go to the back to be nicely pressed. I don't think I will top stitch the side seam on these ones, but if I wanted to top stitch it, it's just so easy in this style of pocket. I like to get a good press on the side seam before I sew the inseam. Just because once that inseam is sewn, it's just harder to get in there and flatten everything out. 
Now I can put the inseam together. Back to the machine. So the inseam goes toward the back as well. Beautiful. Okay, so now I take one leg, turn it right side out. Take the other leg that's still inside out. And put the one that's right side out inside it. So that is one way to sew the crotch seam and get the front and back right side together. And the two U shapes are coming together right side together. So pin corner to corner. There are the two double notches of the back coming together. Inseam to inseam with the seam allowances going toward the back. And then the two single notches of the fronts together. And then corner to corner at the top of the front. That whole U shape is pinned together and I'll just sew with the 15 line or 5 8 line. And then start my edges. So after that U-shaped seam is done, then it's time for belt loops. And I am actually going to skip the belt loops this time because I feel like if I have belt loops, then I have to wear a belt. And it just doesn't seem as summery to have like a leather belt on this. So I'm just gonna skip the belt loops. And I'm also gonna change the way they do the waistband. So here they sew on the waistband, leaving the, I guess the inside edges open so that then they can sew separate casings and put three or four elastics through these separate casings. And I just don't have that kind of patience. So I'm gonna simplify. The back of the waistband has elastic, but the front doesn't. And so I'm, I've cut a piece of lightweight interfacing and I'm gonna fuse it onto that front waistband. Yeah, the instructions don't include that, but I think it is nicer to have a bit of structure to that front waistband. Yeah, it just gives that lightweight chalet a bit more body. I've got inch and a half wide elastic. For the length of it, I just kind of stretch this across my back waist from side to side, and I would want to have it comfortably snug at about this point here. I'm gonna cut it, oh, I don't know, maybe a couple inches past that just to give myself some wiggle room, just a little bit of adjustment if need be. So the back is not interfaced. I'm putting the back on top and the elastic on top of that. I want the elastic to be at the halfway point, kind of pushed up toward that halfway point. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing that seam. And then at the other end, same thing. I'm just gonna bring those edges all together and so on that side. Okay, so I'll just sew those two little sides. So you see the back is much wider than the front. Okay, so I just sewed those ends. Now I'm just gonna wrap that waistband over the elastic. The seam allowance is going toward the front so that the elastic can lay flat and it doesn't have to fold over. And I'm gonna put pins in such a way that I'm not catching the elastic so that the elastic is free to move in there. So that's why my pins are going in sideways. I can tug that elastic along and continue to just wrap that back waistband piece around the elastic. And then the front just gets folded in half, edges together, and I'll just sew these edges all together all the way around just with a basting stitch and just at the edge of my presser foot. So now on my waistband, I can just baste around the bottom edge. So now here at the elasticized part, see how it can slide along. That makes it easier to sew. 
Okay, so now you can see that the, the waistband is just sealed up around the elastic. It still can move along the elastic, that's fine, but I do want to kind of evenly distribute it. So I'm just going to stretch it out a couple of times and let that be evenly distributed. I gave myself a little notch at the center back and at the center front. The waistband is going to go inside. My pants are obviously inside out. This center back notch will go to the center back seam. Center front to the center front of the pants. I'm not going to worry about those threads because they'll get trimmed off when I serge this whole seam. Now let's go sideways. So it's all three raw edges together, like the two edges of the waistband, the one of the pant. And I'll just keep the dart going the way I pressed it toward the center front. The pockets I've already stitched down to be staying toward the front. And then for the back sections, now I want to pick it up and stretch that waistband again. Bring my three edges together and pin. And again, three edges together and pin. I do want to make sure that the elastic is free to move and that I'm not catching the edge. And I'm sewing a bigger seam than I did originally there just to make sure that that first line of stitching doesn't show. So I'm stretching out each section and making sure it's going smoothly under the needle. I don't want any puckers in there. I don't really like to sew over pins, especially on a computerized machine. You can very easily break a needle like that. On a mechanical machine, it's um, easier to get away with sewing over pins. One thing I should have done before I sewed that down was just to try on the waistband and make sure it's fine. And Because if I needed to take out any elastic, now I've got a lot more I'm picking to do. Uh, so I'm going to try this on now before I finish those edges. And dang it, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> the elastic is too big. Oh, lordy, so I have to open up a little bit, take out about three inches of elastic, and then close it up again. And now I'm going to be smart and try it on one more time before I close that all back up. Okay, all fixed. And now I just need to close up that side of the waistband again. So alterations like that, especially when you're almost finished, it seems like so daunting and you just don't want to do it, but it's so worth it. It really is. So now I just need to serge the edge, like the seam between the waistband and the pants, and serge off all of these lucky threads. Very nice, looking good. Ew, except for that, yuck. Trim off threads. All I have left is a little hem at the bottom. And I would normally do a three centimeter hem, but I might do a little bit less because I do like the look of these full length. So I'm going to just do finger width of, it, of a hem. So I have to start and stop a hem at the inseam, just so my back tack is a little more discreetly hidden. Good, so that'll be fine. Oh, what happened? Oh, I ran out of bobbin thread in the last inch. Isn't that the way? Oh my goodness. All right, wind a bobbin and then show you the finished product. I have to say, I love my new outfit. I just feel like a million bucks in this set. So these two pieces, I think are fabulous together. I feel pretty special in this. I, I understand the print is a lot. But this print is not everybody's cup of tea. I love the way the tank top turned out. The pants are like divine, so fantastic. I am glad I went full length and they look supreme but the print is a lot and so i would wear this to a party uh in fact it's my mom's 94th birthday party coming up this sunday and i think this is what i'm gonna wear lunch at a golf course on the patio on a bright sunny day like i think that'll be fabulous now when i put this top with the dark red pants 
I love that outfit too. And I would feel more comfortable at work in that outfit because the dark red tones down this print quite a bit and it looks a little bit more on the conservative, less conspicuous side of things. And the dark top with the print, that might be a great going out to dinner look, uh, but I think my favorite is print and print. I think this is just so much fun to wear. I'm loving it. This rayon chalet feels like heaven and it's going to be great for when the weather gets really warm. Another thing I loved about today's video was the um, single fold bias trick around the neck and armhole. That was a nice little accident and the edge is just great like it's super slick so I'm going to be experimenting more with that in the upcoming video where I will be using it on the outside because I think it just looks fantastic but I think I've got my fix for jumpsuits now I think I can move on so my next video I'll be back with thrifting and upcycling can't wait to see you back here for that thank you so much for joining me today and until next time on Catherine Sews you take care